Hi, welcome back. In this tutorial we're going to have a look at creating a 909 snare drum and basically the reason we're doing this one so kind of late in the series is because over the whole course of the series we've covered a lot and learnt quite a lot of techniques that are really useful for making drums and we've kind of started with the simplest and then worked our way through and gradually developed and when creating the congas that we did in the last tutorial, these ones here, we managed to find a pretty good waveform that is the closest we're probably going to get to a sine wave using this method of taking tiny loops of these audio files like this. You can see here it looks pretty even. So the 909 snare was made up of basically three different sounds. It was made up of two sine waves, uh, each to represent the top and bottom skins of the snare. And the snare itself, which was emulated with some white noise. So we're going to do that here. We're going to create the white noise by using one of the later beats in this sample here that we've also used for the clap and the open hi-hat. And we're going to mix that with two of these congas. Well, we're going to start with congas, but we're basically just using that same small piece of waveform. And starting here with slice eight, first of all, we'll do the white noise. We'll just move these region starting endpoints down to the end there. And we'll leave it like that for the moment. And then what we're going to do is copy two of these congas. We'll just select the conga up here so that it brings up the nested rack and just select two of these by holding the shift key on Mac or PC and then we're just going to drag this to slice 8 holding the control and alt key or command and alt and you can see that creates that little nested rack there now if I then go and name this chain or rename it to 909 snare you'll notice that here on the pad the name doesn't change it just stays at multi and this is basically what live does when there's more than one sample set to receive on the same midi note which is represented by a pad so the only way to get around this and to be able to name that sample is to actually enable in out view here and you can see here it's set to all and you can see toms are set to all as well but the main difference is that the toms are all receiving on different MIDI notes. If we look over here, you can see their receive notes are different. And of course, as the pads are really just uh, shortcuts to the MIDI notes, they're just a way of representing the notes that each chain is assigned to. Uh, all of the toms get their own pads, but the 909 snare, they're all receiving on the same note. So it just lists them as multi. So the way to get around that is to change the receive note here to G1 as that's the note that this pad represents and that they're all receiving on. Where is it? It's there. So you'll notice straight away the pad is now called 909 snare because that's the name of the chain that is represented by it. But if you see, if we trigger on that, nothing happens. And that's because the play note is different to what these samples are set to receive on. So we need to change that to G1 as well. And there we go, it triggers now. So that's a little bit long winded, but it's necessary, unfortunately. So let's rename this as well. So it's not just called drum rack, 909 snare. And let's change our repeating note. Trigger that. Now let's just solo our snare and we'll work on that one first. So we'll rename that snare. And might as well rename these as well to bottom skin. And top skin and first thing we're going to do is turn on a high pass filter bring it down a bit there turn it up a bit as well maybe transpose it down a bit as well and 
turn the sustain down on the volume envelope like we have with pretty much everything else so far. Maybe a touch more release. Now we're going to add an EQ8 plugin. And bring it to right there. And we're just going to boost the top frequencies a bit. And we'll leave that there for the moment. Now we'll add a saturator plugin directly after it. There. Soft clip, turn it to soft sign mode, I think. Maybe turn it down a bit so we don't blast ourselves. Maybe just adjust that a little bit, widen it a bit, maybe. Okay, we'll leave that there for the moment, and we'll come back to that later. Let's try the bottom skin. This one is going to be probably the simplest of all. We're not really going to do very much to this. Turn off the filter envelope, and just lower the filter frequency and resonance a little bit. And we'll reset the transpose to zero. Now, maybe adjust the volume envelope a little bit. Just pull the decay back a bit, but just check that. See, that's all we really want from the bottom skin, just a bit of a little bassy sound. So let's look at the top skin. Up the transpose so that it's an octave above the bottom skin. So that's plus 12 semitones. And enable the pitch envelope. And we're going to turn that down a bit around here and let's trigger that now the pitch envelope settings pull the sustain right down and then pull the decay back a bit we don't really want to hear it much it's just going to give it a little bit of an attack pull that low pass filter frequency down and the resonance a bit as well and turn the envelope amount down a bit as well the decay up and all we really want from this top skin sound is that sort of punchiness that poppy sort of sound that you get from the top skin of a snare drum and this is really going to make up the bulk of the sound this would be probably the loudest one so if we just hear them all together Bottom one can come down a bit, and the snare. Now, that's not too far off, a 909 snare now. Might just want to play about with this again a little bit more, but might leave that for a moment. We don't really need too much of that. So we might add a compressor to the overall snare drum. Just to even it out a bit. All right, now let's listen to that in context. Now you may, may not be able to quite hear it, but there's a little bit of a ringing sound going on here. We just solo this. It's coming from the top skin chain. And it's because the pitch, the release on the pitch envelope is not up high enough. So when the note's being released, it's pitching up at the end there. So that's why we need to have the release all the way up in the pitch envelope. I'll pull that decay back as well. Because we just want that in poppy sort of attack from this, really. Hear that. Now the bottom skin might be a bit loud. snare sound here hasn't got, the, the velocity's not turned up. You can see on these other two it's at 100%, so we'll turn that up as well so that velocity will have an effect on that snare sound as well. And so we might need to turn it down a bit to make up for that. You can hear 
now that that has an effect on all the all the sounds. And there we go. That's not sounding too bad, really. That's fairly close to a 99 snare drum. You probably wouldn't pick out that that wasn't a real one if you heard it in a track. But what I might just quickly do is map the pitch or the transpose setting to one of the macros here, to macro 8, on the top and bottom skins there. You may remember from previous tutorials, this means that the settings for pitch for both of these is now going to be the same. Uh, so we need to go into map mode here and change it so that they've still got the same interval between them. So that one is at plus 12 and the other is at zero, for example. And also we want to change the minimum and maximum values because if you see here, turning that to the extremes is probably way further than we really want it to go. You're not likely to want the snare to be pitched up or down by the, quite that much. So if we just set the maximum value, I think to around 18, for the top, snit, top skin. And for the minimum value, we might make that minus 18. And for the bottom skin, we might make the maximum value plus 6. So there's still 12 semitones between them. And you might need to use the arrow keys on the keyboard for fine adjustments if it's not cooperating with the mouse. And we might make that minus 30. So that's, again, 12 less than minus 18. Actually, now that I think about it, I'm going to make it even less. I'll make that minus 6. And we'll make that one minus 18. OK, well, let's try that now. That's probably still a lot more than we need. Uh, I think it's more than the 909 allowed in tuning the pitch. And now what I might do is just set this volume of the snare to macro 7. And that could be like the snappy control that you'd find on a 909. I can't see as ever wanting it to go as high as plus 6 dB. In fact, we probably don't really want to go above minus 12 um, on the maximum setting. So let's try that. And of course, you could map any parameter you like to the rest of these macros. There was a tone parameter on the 909, which might be worth mapping to a filter. But we're just going to leave it like this for the moment. So let's just try our loop again. Turn the overall volume up. So there we go, that's uh, given us a fair amount of control. Uh, we can add more, change it again, um, but we'll leave it like that for now. We can see it still says slice right there. I'll call that snare, just to be neat. All right, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thanks for watching.